Your doctor has recommended that you have a total knee replacement surgery. This video will help you to understand the procedure. Let's begin by reviewing information about your body. The knee is the largest joint in the body. It makes walking and running possible by allowing the lower leg to swing back and forth. Three bones are part of the knee joint. The femur, commonly known as the thigh bone, sits on top of the tibia, known as the shin bone. In front of the knee is the patella or kneecap. The patella not only protects the joint, it also creates necessary leverage for the thigh muscles to move the lower leg. Where these three bones touch, the bone surfaces are covered by cartilage. This smooth white tissue allows the joint to move easily with activity. The meniscus is an extra layer of cartilage on top of the tibia. It is a cushion that protects the joint surfaces. When cartilage becomes damaged or wears down, the protective cover is lost and bones rub together. Moving the joint becomes painful and difficult. This damage is called arthritis. Non-surgical treatments that may help manage pain and improve movement include weight loss, physical therapy, bracing, exercise, and medications. A knee replacement can be recommended when your daily life is limited by knee pain, especially when work, exercise, and sleep are affected and non-surgical treatments are not helping. The goal of this surgery is to lessen pain and improve knee function. A total knee replacement is often called a resurfacing procedure because only the joint surfaces are removed. The bones are trimmed just enough to fit permanent implants. Implants can be made of metal, plastic, and or ceramic. Screws and bone cement may be used to hold them in place. There are different surgical techniques to replace a knee. The size of the incision can vary. The surgical approach and implant for you depends on your surgeon, their experience and training, and your individual situation. Be sure you understand which procedure is planned for you. Now let's look closer at the total knee replacement procedure. The knee to be replaced is marked while you are awake. You are given medication to be pain-free during the procedure. An incision is made over the knee. The surgeon works carefully through the layers of skin and other tissues to reach the tendons, muscles, and finally, the bones of the knee. The patella is moved to the side of the joint, and the knee is bent to expose the bone surfaces. The damaged bone and cartilage is removed from the femur. The edges are trimmed to match the femur implant. The process is repeated for the tibia by cleaning and shaping the surface for its new part. Then, if needed, the inside of the patella is shaved to fit a small button-like implant. Holes are drilled in the femur, tibia, and patella as needed to anchor the implants. Bone cement may be applied next. The replacement part for each bone surface is put into position. The implants may be further secured with screws. A plastic spacer is snapped into the tibia implant. Throughout the procedure, the size and fit of the parts are tested. After they are secured, the leg is put through motions to be certain the parts fit and move well together. The layers of tissue over the joint are repaired. The surgical area is checked for bleeding and the skin is closed and a dressing placed. After surgery, speak up and tell your care team if you have more than expected pain or problems. They will be watching for early, rare complications. Most patients stay in the hospital for one to three nights. You can expect to receive antibiotics to lessen the risk of infection. You will have some pain, bruising, and swelling. And you may have a drain near your incision for a few days. Physical therapy, also called PT, is critical to the recovery process. 
It may begin the day of surgery by having you walk or simply move your knee. A therapist will teach you exercises to stretch, bend, and straighten the knee. Physical therapy supports this difficult work for you to have the best knee function possible. This process can take two to four months. You may find that anesthesia and narcotic pain medicine can cause side effects including lightheadedness, itching, nausea, and severe constipation. Also, narcotic pain medicine becomes less helpful with pain after the first few days. Use narcotics with care and only as instructed by your surgeon. You will find it most helpful to manage pain using a combination of medication, exercises to relieve stiffness, rest with leg elevation, and ice using ice packs wrapped in a towel. Never put ice directly on your skin. Over 600,000 knee replacements are done every year. Fewer than 2% or 2 in 100 patients have a major complication. Potential serious problems related to this surgery can include bleeding, wound infection, heart attack, stroke, pneumonia, and a blood clot called a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. A blood clot, or DVT, can form in the legs or pelvis during or after surgery. It can cause a lung complication called a PE, or pulmonary embolism. Steps are taken by your care team to help avoid this complication. Medications to lessen this risk will be prescribed. It is important to take these medications as instructed. Other specific risks related to the implant include infection that can happen weeks or years after surgery, implant failure due to loosening, breaking, or wearing down over time, and some implants must be replaced to fix certain problems. Despite these risks, up to 90% of patients find their implants functioning after 15 years. After a knee replacement, there may be less feeling with touch or numbness near the incision site. Knee pain can continue for some patients, although most patients have less pain. And some difficulties bending or straightening the knee can be common. Avoid sitting for too long. Stay active and work with your physical therapist to lessen these risks. For the best results, follow your care instructions and call your doctor if you have a fever, worsening pain, swelling, or redness in your legs or at your incision site. Call 911 if you have chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, bleeding that doesn't stop, and any other sign that you may be having a complication from the procedure. Hospital admission, medication, or surgery may be needed to correct some problems. Help your body heal. Eat healthy foods. Avoid junk food and sugary drinks. Don't smoke. And keep your blood sugar under control if you are diabetic. Smoking and high blood sugar both slow healing. Follow your doctor's instructions to take care of your knee replacement. Know that all movement wears on implants over time. Extra weight and high impact activities stress the joint more. Low impact activities like walking, swimming and biking are better than running and jumping for your knee. To avoid cancellation or complications from anesthesia or your procedure, your job as the patient is to not eat, drink or chew gum after midnight the night before the procedure unless you are given different instructions. Take only medications you were told to on the morning of the procedure with a sip of water. Follow instructions regarding aspirin and blood thinners before surgery and arrive on time. You should be ready to verify or confirm your list of medical problems and surgeries, all of your medications including vitamins and supplements, your current smoking, alcohol and drug use and all allergies especially to medications, latex, and tape. All surgery and anesthesia have a small but possible risk of serious injury, even some problems very rarely leading to death. It is your job to speak up and ask your surgeon if you still have questions about why this surgery is being recommended for you, the risks and alternatives. This video is intended as a tool to help you better understand the procedure that you are scheduled to have or are considering. 
It is not intended to replace any discussion, decision-making, or advice of your physician.